thank you everybody for joining us back here at GCAC's channel. We have another special guest for you guys today as we sit here with Miss Marla Rivera, CEO of Biomass Products and Services, LLP, another reseller with GCAC. Marla, before we dive into the company, I want to know a bit more about yourself, how you wound up where you are today, your past experience, and what really makes you tick as a businesswoman. So let us have it. Um, I have been a grant writer for 28 years. Um, I've worked in different all different meant different governmental um, needs. Um, the definition of a grant writer is when you see social change, um, you come to action and you do the best that you can. Okay. Um, I started with, in biomass products, I started in um, 16 years ago um, when we were having a, um, we were starting to have a, a big, topic of the climate and food and and all of these all of these different um uh issues were happening and um i was reached people reached out to me because they wanted me to uh actually research mm -hmm. uh find you know um different opportunities for them uh to make changes in their own companies um and that with that being said it grew till i was uh introduced to um, Biosun Technologies, mm -hmm. which had built the first uh, uh, flax uh, processing plant and it was sent over to Germany. And then I started my research globally. Um, and flax is a sister plant to hemp, mm -hmm. industrial hemp. Um, so by the time the 2014 um, uh, research and development law had passed, I had already had a good seven years of flax uh, under my belt in research and so, and grant writing. And uh, then I went on board with Biosun Technologies and, and to this day, we still are, but we work under them. And um, what I saw was, is that there wasn't, uh, where you're talking about female or, you know, agriculture, um, you know, uh, and, uh, and then, let me see, let me see. There was uh, the indigenous and the minority and the female um, were not, there wasn't a voice. And I did have the fortunate luck to meet um, uh, the uh, lady who put in, in procurement for the government, uh, the set-asides. Mm -hmm. uh, she's worked under three administrations. And ironically, she thanked me, she had retired and she thanked me for you know, she had all kinds of questions and, and suggestions that at that point, the uh, 8A program under the SBA was just lagging and um, the female minority, all the rest of us were, we were either had to join JV with a large company or we were out of the, out of the, the, the bidding wars for any of the, the monies. So I um, decided, uh, I, between 2014 and 2018, um, when we were waiting on the, the, actual, uh, the actual laws to regulations, so on and so forth that we anticipated, um, as you know, uh, became the uh, CBD craze. And in the meantime, I was doing research um, on a larger scale where I knew at that point that there was over 50,000 markets um, that primarily we were already using in our homes, mm -hmm. right down to the mascara, uh, you know, makeup, clothing, rugs. Um, and I, I did a little research with Wayfair, which is a, a brand everybody knows on, on the internet and yeah. they buy from all over the world. And I just did a test uh, a study on their, where their vendors were from and they had over 1600 products that contained industrial hemp, the hemp that were it was being processed in other countries, but not and sold here and the manufactured here. And I thought, well, there's something really fishy about all this. And so I went, I dug deeper. And um, with that being said, when they did pass the, uh, the law, I would go and show up at town halls, speak to governmental bodies. Um, and uh, then I would bring wood that everybody was all about CBD and I was bringing wood that was 
being made or, you know, construction parts that were that were already being innovated. And they, we were so far ahead of the CBD that literally bottlenecked and, you know, um, went wild west on us. And, um, and there was the great Tennessee auction where, you know, everything was 10 cents a pound. Um, things were getting hot in the fields. They didn't know what to do with it. Uh, Oregon had it sitting out in the fields for free. Yeah. Farmers were losing their farms. Uh, things got very ugly. And to be quite honest with you, um, one in three farmers in, in Wisconsin were committing suicide losing wow. and losing their farms. And when that happened, my, I have family there. And when that happened, um, I, I became more real proactive. And uh, I took a trip up there and saw my own grandfather's farm. And that was someone had bought and uh, it was it wasn't even recognizable. Uh, small business, we had cheese factories, we had all different, you know, even um, paper mills and huge, you know, uh, sources of income uh, for the regular simple life. Mm -hmm. That's what I refer to it as. That set me into a different direction of research on the, uh, actually what was going on because there was a 3M factory in, uh, in our town then they were a paper mill. Mm -hmm. And so now um, recently, just as of yesterday, uh, uh, 3M is actually, uh, uh, they're trying to overcome, they're growing hemp to overcome all of the, the uh, pollution challenges that they're having. And um, I mean, there's, there's actually cleanup all over the United States of places where they've, you know, utilized uh, and, and really ruined the soil. Yeah. And um, so it's the chemicals that they have. If you've ever been in a paper mill uh, city, it's the, the air quality is, it is, it's putrid. It's just, yeah. if you, you could, it, the acid is just in the air. So then um, I decided, okay, well, you know, if you want to make a move, you got to get your boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided um, I did work on a grant um, for biosun and for biomass and uh, actually included uh, these farmers co-ops. And I designed a, a, a platform and uh, a, a whole process of that's, there's, there's a couple other individuals that I really respect a lot um, that uh, have made some differences. And, um, and one of them is, is called uh, Body and Mind is, is a group that they, they saw the bottlenecks, you know, of the processing um, and uh, the, the farmers that were getting uh, new regulations that until they show up at your door, you don't know you've lost, you've lost your farm, you don't know. And um, so the education was very important. And I included that in the, uh, the actual program and GCAC came my way and it was perfect, it fit. And not only did it fit for say industrial hemp, but my first uh, conversation with GCAC was, I truly, and I truly mean this, that this is the way that all of our foods that we are, we are ingesting and using um, should be tracked, traced, it should be transparent. You should be, you should know um, that your five-year-old, a, a test for results that just happened um, and was released, that your five-year-old should not be urinating uh, pesticides. Yeah. And um, being a mother and a grandmother, uh, it really kind of aggravated me. So I thought, okay, then if that's how you want to do it, um, then, you know, we have to educate and make it easy for the farmer. Yeah. And okay. that's what our goal is. And GCAC does that. It does help us make it very easy for them um, to uh, follow everything from, say, you know, Farmer Mike's farm from the minute the seed goes in and the quality of seed, the biogenetics, all of that, all the way through till we get to the end. And there's a QRL code and they know when you buy that and, and uh, Farmer Mike's wife goes over to the market and she buys 
uh, tomatoes or she buys wheat or uh, bread that's made with it, if that QRL code is on there, then you know that what you're eating is healthy. That's what my goal is. And, and my, this is the way, the natural way of the uh, uh, indigenous Indians and the people that that's the way they live. Yeah. And so it, 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 it's not, a, it's a no brainer really. I mean, but the software is a brainer, but for the ones implementing and, and introducing to the farmers, uh, something that they can utilize that will, if regulations change, guess what? We have, we have information for you right away. You'll, you'll be, you know, you won't lose, you won't lose. And now, um, as of, uh, cause I'm, you're going to notice, I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of, I'm, I'm one of those nosy rosies and I, I always keep up with everything that's going on. And as of yesterday, they announced that they are going to, um, uh, cover insurances and so on and so forth for um it, actually for hemp mm -hmm. and it's uh including the um direct and guaranteed loans administered by the usda so wow. um it's to help keep farmers uh farming and that's what it's called so um the, there's over 3.1 billion is going to be farm loan relief and nearly 40 billion towards subsequent agriculture initiatives over the next 10 years and that sounds sounds a little maybe a little low on on but that's not to say that later on and i've seen grants change and i've seen them extend and everybody's familiar with an sbir which is study and development and so on and so forth these are universities and these are colleges that apply for you know these sbir grants mm -hmm. that continue on and if this is our end goal this is what we apply we have, we've applied, this is what our theory is, and this is our end goal. And so by working with GCAC, actually expanding to work with colleges and their, their different um, ideas and, you know, formulas and what have you, um, I really believe that the government should use this system for everything that we make or grow in every commodity. There's no doubt in my head at all. Yeah. It, no, it could, this could even stop world hunger. With, with that idea, I feel like it, it started, and this is something I had just talked about previously, this this idea started socially, right? It started amongst the people. Um, it often came from, like you said, when you, when you tie into it, it's ideas that are not new. People have had this idea of tracking and tracing technically for a very long period of time. Oh, yeah. Talking about something new, it's just a motion that's finally getting back to where it is. And it went from the social side of things. And then the investors started caring more and applying that soft pressure and governments are now getting involved too and pushing it along. So I feel like things are heading in the right direction and, and, and people like yourself, Marla, are largely responsible for, for pushing things in the right direction with that too. So so what, what do you think the timelines are for this before this becomes the norm? As you said, you, you're on the page that this is this is going the, this way. GCAC and technologies as such are pushing things that way. When do you think this will become the norm? Well, my uh, initial uh, project um, when I started uh, doing all of this, I, I did a, a, a clinical study layout for three years to see how we, how the, um, uh, the farmers, how we could get everybody working together mm -hmm. and adjust uh, without a, a huge um, cost. I mean, right now we're in, we're in a, uh, a period that inflation had just started upscaling at that time. And so um, with that being said, I mean, when you've got a, a farmer that's paying three times as much for fuel and grain and, and everything that we eat and we grow and, and whatever, I would, I'd have to say, but I, I could give it a good five years that it would, it would be something that the government, if they really, really paid attention Mm -hmm. and uh, saw the benefit to the, the ease of not having, uh, when there's recalls, we had five recalls this week alone on food yeah. that could have been solved in a matter of days versus months. And yeah. the, the amount of food that was lost, okay, when, when, when we have people standing in food pantry lines right now is not a good thing. So I, I would give it five years, Mike, if, if they did it, if they listened, if they paid attention and listened, mm -hmm. um, it, it could be done. It could be done. Anybody who is in edibles um, in the cannabis or industrial hemp will, will tell you that this 
is a uh, God grown, and I'm not trying to be religious here. It's just, it's plant, it's on our planet. Mm -hmm. But if it was available in, in different parts of the world, as readily as we are have, it would end world hunger, right down to breastfeeding mothers. So when you think about it like that, they can make soups, they can make breads, they can make, you know, from the flour, they can, the, the seeds themselves, it could change the whole dynamic globally. That's a bigger, that's a bigger fish, right? To fry, you know, yeah, then, yeah. then one step at a I, time. Right, exactly. I did talk to a rabbi once and I asked him, what, what could I do, you know, just being one person? And he said, one person plants the seed, Marla, and the rest of the seeds grow. And I took that to heart because, um, you know, I, I just thought it, I was overwhelmed. I really was. And anybody would be. I mean, yeah, I'm just is, one person. That is the truth, yeah. though. At the end of the day, I mean, we, we all have roles to play and you've been playing yours very well. And um, I do appreciate you taking the time to come on and introduce yourself, talk about what motivates you in this. It's a compelling story. And if anyone has any questions for Marla, please don't be afraid to reach out. But um, here, kind of wrapping things up a little bit. So um, what's, what's the last thing you'd like to offer people before we go today? I would, I would offer them the um, talk to your farmer neighbors and really um, let them know how you feel about the obesity and the, 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 the foods that you're eating at the grocery stores. Okay. And, and reach out to them and let them know that you're, you're there backing them and whatever, you know, um, would make it everybody it works out for everybody, for the farmer, for the mark, for the, uh, uh, the marketing, you know, when you go to the grocery store, you don't want to have to pay tenfold to be healthy. Um, and every female or males to go grocery shopping too, but you know, the moms and take care of the children and they want to feed them, them wholesome foods without it being um, uh, pesticides and, and bad, you know, ingredients and so on and so forth mm -hmm. um, that are not healthy. And so, you know, talk to your, we, I live in a rural commu community. Everybody's growing their, they're growing their own cattle again. They're got their chickens and eggs and everything is going back to the simple life. And that's what they call it. They refer to it as, but education is the most get, get even yourself in your own home. When you go home, study a little bit about it and learn. Well said. Well, Marla, again, thank you so much for coming on today. Everyone, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to send them over. And Marla, please have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you for having me.